Kind of a strange video today. We're doing a clutch in a CBR 300R engine, but it's in a Grom. The process will mostly be the same. You're gonna have to strip plastics off to whatever point you have to do to get to this side of the case. This is throttle side. Everything that I have is gonna look a little bit different because it's set up, like I said, on this Grom. The engine's tilted forward to all nine yards, but any 300 and I think the 250s are the same <coughs> here's the engine code if we can see that <coughs> Wait, no that's the wrong side hold on hold on first first screw up the in, in video there it is okay Let's see if we can see this down here okay it's the NC 51e right yeah okay um you're gonna want to drain your fluids if you want to do this right um i'm not i'm <laughs> gonna do this the lazy way and i don't want to drain fluids and put fluids back in so i'm actually going to lean the bike over and that's what that jack stands in over there and i'm going to prop the bike up laying almost completely over and try to let all the oil and fluid go to one side i might lose a little bit of coolant but it won't be a lot and i am going to take my header off because I don't want coolant or oil or anything to drip on it and stain it because it's so pretty. So you might not have to do that if you've got stock exhaust or whatever. Maybe you just don't care if you drain the fluids out. You don't have to worry about it anyway. <clears throat> but, but what we really need to get into is taking this cover off and actually changing the part. So I got the Sex Machine 6 disc clutch. Okay. Got it from SETI Garage. See if this bullshit camera will focus. It won't. So it says the upgrade for the CBR 300R on there. And it's SMR 1019. Okay. And yes, I did open it. I wanted to poke at it and play at it. Anyway, that's what we're going to be switching out. Let me get this bike cleaned over and take that header pipe off. All right, here's my precarious situation. As you can see, it's pretty stable though. We're not really gonna be jerking around on it. I'll pro I really should have laid with my car over there. This is just a mess. This is a disaster waiting to happen. So I pulled the O2 sensor, dropped the header like I said. I took out this one bolt on my rear set and just twisted the rear set out of the way so we can get to all the holes and get the this cover off. This really shouldn't be a big job. Um, these are all eight millimeter around here. This is for the oil filter, so you don't really need to take that off, I don't think. I haven't actually watched any videos about this or read any articles about this, so we're kind of just winging it. Um, I've taken my little radiator hose off and I haven't pulled this off yet. I wanna get like some kind of bowl because I know that some coolant's gonna come out. I just don't know how much. Um, Actually, I'm, the more I'm thinking about this, this is a horrible idea because coolant is absolutely going to try to come out of there and just get in the engine oil. This is going to be a disaster and I'm going to have to drain the oil anyway, but <laughs> we're going to see what happens. It's a Grom. So <clears throat> let me get a bowl and let's try to maintain a decently clean work environment and not get oil and coolant all over the damn place. <sighs> Probably smartest if y'all drain your fluids, don't be like me. Okay, I got my just little whatever bucket for whatever might come out of here. 
I'm gonna start by taking this hose off. I think one should be a drain and I don't know whether that's an arrow or not. I don't know. We should be able to drain this somehow. I would think it would be one of these, maybe that one, but that little, that looks like an arrow, right? Let's tr we'll try that one and see if any fluid comes out. So we'll take this one out first. And I don't think those two need to come out. These just go into the cover. But if that's the drain, we'll take that out and see how much fluid comes out and maybe save a mess. And then, of course, down here, this one goes all the way back into the engine under my radiator bracket. So we'll take that one out and then we'll go all the way around. This pipe needs to come off. There's probably either a gasket or an O-ring or something under there. So be careful when you take that off, not ruin it. I do not have another gasket to go back on under this cover. Probably a wise idea if you do. I don't, so I'm gonna have to be super careful trying to take this off. And if I tear it, I'm gonna have to use some gasket maker and try to reseal it. So let's take this one out first and see if we can drain any fluid out and then pull this radiator hose off. And then we'll take this tube off. So even with it tilted on its side, we had coolant go everywhere. So definitely, definitely need to drain it. That was in fact the drain. I took that out and I made a bit of a mess, but I drained as much as I could out and took the radiator hose off and removed this. It is O-rings that's behind it. Make sure you don't lose them. You will need them again. That a little bolt bucket. The rest of this should be pretty straightforward. Just take these all off. I mean, that's that's it. Let's go around. Let's remove all the bolts. And uh, see what we got. Okay, I got a little bit cowardly. And I stood the bike up a little bit and tried to drain some more coolant out. And then leaned it back over. I think I'm good now. Definitely drain your fluids, guys. Definitely, definitely drain your fluids. Um, you're going to take the cover off or remove all the bolts. And you can very carefully turn your clutch lever back backwards a little bit. And I'll pull it off. It came off pretty easy. So be very careful if you're trying to not replace the gasket like me. Very carefully, let's take this off. And very carefully, let's hope that Jared got enough coolant out where it's not going to mix with the oil and create himself another problem. So let me get the cover off and let's see what we're looking at. I think I'm okay. <laughs> it came off super easy. The gasket's fine. Um, gonna have to clean the surface a little bit, but as you can see, I'm not gonna have to touch the oil. It's all went over to the other side. Thank God for that. Looks like the main the coolant passage is it's it's really one where the water pump is and it goes through there. And there was still a little bit of coolant in the cover when I took it off, but none got in, so I think we're good on that. Um, we can check our oil screen, which is right here. I'll have to pull that out with some pliers and check that and clean that. Here's where we're after. The clutch is right here. Replace this, and we should be good to go. Um, let me pull my screen out and clean it. And these look like, are those eight or tens? Tens? Yeah, those are 10 millimeter. If you have one of your 10 millimeter sockets and didn't lose them, and I'm gonna quit trying to change that before I drop it in the antifreeze. Uh, take this out, let's clean it and put it back in, and let's take these five bolts off and release the pressure from the, because the springs are under these, so do them carefully, okay? Let's take these off and see what state these discs are in that's looks old <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the original clutch that was on this so anyway let's get it let's get it together okay so like we said the five bolts and your springs come out and the front cover comes off I did not get the upgraded springs 
I kind of, I guess I should have since I've got it off, but I think I'll be okay. So this is what we're replacing. It's all of this mess. Let's see if I can do all of this in one bit. I cannot, clearly. There we go. So, some of these definitely look worn out. The very back disc doesn't look horrible, but the rest of these look pretty rough. They look pretty rough. So, we're just going to set this aside and get the new discs out and a bottle of oil so we can put a little bit of oil on the surface of each disc and reassemble. So this is a little awkward. Um, some things have happened and I'm refilming part of this so it's it has continuity. So this is where we left off. We removed our five bolts here and our clutch springs come out and this face comes off. Now, I've already pulled the old clutch discs off. That was in an older clip. Look, I can show them to you real quick. They're pretty worn out. Okay. Here's the old discs. Okay, they're pretty worn. That was the inside one. Now, the point is for this, if you're upgrading to the six disc clutch like we are, there's these two shim rings they go on the back okay so those go on here now why did I replace the clutch center I filmed this and I'm just refilming it instead as you can see there's a bolt broke off in here two of these are stripped the internet which is wrong says that these bolts need to be torqued down to 9.8 foot pounds which is the equivalent to about 108 inch pounds I have looked all over everywhere including Honda websites, and I get a bunch of mixed things to torque to yield, torque to whatever. It's all a bunch of nonsense because 9.8 foot pounds broke that bolt off and stripped two of these. And I filmed that entire segment and it was so terrible and I was so unhappy about it. I'm just refilming everything instead. So, as you can see, these are the old springs. I did end up buying new springs since I had to buy a new clutch center. I did not film taking out the clutch center. It was one nut. I used my impact and it came right off. This nut right here. It's a staked nut. This came off and I just put on a new clutch center. Just a Honda OEM part and I bought five new bolts. So, where we are at is I have put the discs back in in the correct order, okay? And I've put, I had oil put in them. I'm gonna have to put a little bit more in them since I can see that they're drying out a little bit. So, another thing to note that I am going to do, I don't necessarily recommend it, but I'm done trusting the internet on their fucking bullshit. So this is our clutch actuator lever. With the six disc clutch, this plate, the pressure, I'm assuming this would be the equivalent of a pressure plate, is out more. So you get all this extra play in this actuator rod. Now there is a ball bearing inside this plate, as you can see. It's a wet clutch, all right? And that's important because I found up a washer that I had that fits over that rod as close as I can get to fit. Okay, it is a wet clutch, will always be in oil. My only concern is it covers up quite a lot of the back of this bearing. However, the oil can get in the front of the bearing. So I don't think I'm gonna worry too much about it. And there is still a little bit of play in this washer or in this rod with that washer on there. But as you can see, It's a lot less than it is without it. And I'll show you again without it. Now, why would I bother doing all of this? Because this pressure plate is spaced out more, we don't have as much free play in our clutch. And I want to be able to adjust it 
and I'm assuming this washer is as good a thickness as uh, at least one of those extra discs. So you can see we still have a little free play, so it's not tight. It might rattle just a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be bad, not in the oil. So the next thing is these 30% springs. And I cannot stress this enough. Do not try to put these at 10 foot pounds. They just won't. I used my torque wrench on it. And the whole time I was doing it, I was talking throughout the video about how it felt too tight and I shouldn't go further. <laughs> it felt too tight. But I did anyway because the internet said that's what it was. And then it set me a week back waiting for replacement parts to get in so I could put this son of a bitch back together. Okay. So we're just going to put these in finger tight. And you don't need to be going all the way at one time. You need to slowly bring these in. Now, I've had this on once before to figure out, let's see, we still got our play. I wanna check that. I can hear it rat on. Hopefully it won't be too bad with the, the oil on it, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna put some more oil in these discs back here, but I'm going up to 30 inch pounds on these, which still feels a little light. I might go up to about 40 and call it good. And uh, that's where we're gonna go. I did it by feel, and by feel was about 40 inch pounds, 30 to 40 inch pounds. So I'm gonna get out my small torque wrench and torque these down to 40 inch pounds. I don't know what they're supposed to be. I can't find a definitive number. That feels tight enough to me. Don't trust me. You should probably look this up at Honda, call Honda. I've been changing enough bolts in my life where I'm not trusting what other people tell me. I'm gonna just do, like I said, about 40 inch pounds. And after that, this thing should go back together. Cross our fingers. Really quickly, my paranoia kicked in and I moved them up to about 80 inch pounds. 80 inch pounds, inch pounds. Okay, and I'll show you about how tight I did. I did put a torque wrench on there to make sure they were all even. Okay, that's almost as much as I can do by hand with the ratchet, just a quarter inch ratchet. I did torque them down to 80 inch pounds. So that's what felt tight enough. This should be the right thing. Make sure we still got our slack. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of oil and put in here and put the cover back on. There it is. To tighten these case bolts out, make sure you do them catty corner like you're supposed to and tighten everything the way you're supposed to, okay? Um, there is one bolt that's just a little bit shorter and I'm pretty sure that one goes in the drain hole there. It's only maybe an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch shorter than the rest. As far as the clutch goes, I am using the CBR300 clutch cable. It's a little bit longer. Uh, your stock grom will probably work. Uh, it works so much better now. That And I don't have a lot of free play. I just have it so I know that it's not slipping, but it's fully engaging and I can fully disengage it. Um, I do have these shorty levers. I know that a lot of people have difficulty with these clutches. They need to full throw. These are the adjustable ones, and I have it all the way adjusted out, and it will fully disengage the clutch. Uh, the clutch does hold. Um, 
I started it a minute ago, checked for drips, and held the front brake on and let out on the clutch slowly by slowly but surely and started spinning the rear tire. So it should be okay. Um, what else? What else? What else? Be sure that you check all your fluid levels because we've dropped some fluid. I've already checked my oil, but that's why I had it tilted at such an angle so I didn't drain any oil. Um, we did lose some coolant, so we need to top that off. But other than that, we should be done and good to go. Um, I'm hoping to quit draining. I'd like to ride it. I've yet to actually ride ride it. Like I'm actually filming this in between the final video for tuning it because the clutch was slipping so bad I couldn't even ride it to get a good tune. So uh, we are going to wait till it dries up and take it out on the road and that'll be that. We can put a finish in this project we've been working on for almost a year. September 15th, 2022 is when it died and it will be back on the road by September 15th, 2023. I have another couple days to mess with it and then I'm gonna ride it. So, thanks for watching everybody. Come on, boy! Come on! Yeah!